Now, the developments in Syria have created an ominous new news that could be taking shape in the Middle East. Iran now apparently seeking to forge even closer ties with Russia. This as we learn that several Iranian military officials and diplomats met with their Russian counterparts in Syria yesterday. Now with the possibility that the U.S. could be stepping up our involvement in Syria, the alliance between Tehran and Moscow could be cemented even further, all in support for Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad. Here's how Senator Lindsey Graham this morning put it. If you kill babies with conventional bombs, it's still a moral outrage. Here's what I think Assad's telling Trump by flying from this base. F you. And I think he's making a serious mistake. Because if you're an adversary of the United States, and you don't worry about what Trump may do on any given day, wow. then you're crazy. Well, Ambassador John Bolton joins us, former U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Fox's contributor, senior fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, and chairman of the Gatestone Institute here in New York. Uh, Ambassador, you know, Senator Graham certainly has a colorful way uh, of putting it, but, uh, I mean, essentially, he's 100 percent right. Well, I think uh, there's been a lot of uh, commentary, obviously, since the uh, uh, U.S. attack on the Syrian air base uh, Thursday evening, Friday morning, uh, Middle East time. Uh, but much of it is pure speculation. I don't think there is any evidence whatever, based on what the president himself has said, that there's any change in policy uh, that represented by this airstrike. This was a breach of Syria's obligations under the Chemical Weapons Convention. I think the United States, uh, really, for its own safety's sake and for the safety of our friends and allies around the world, is the enforcer of the uh, limits and prohibitions on the use and proliferation of weapons of mass destruction, nuclear, chemical, and biological. So I thought this strike was the right thing to do to uh, tell Syria uh, not to do it again, to tell Iran and North Korea we can do it to you, to tell Russia and China, get your surrogates under control. I don't think that means uh, necessarily a, any change at all with respect to Syria. So, so while that's what people have been talking about, I, I just don't see the evidence of it at the moment. Uh, but, you know, almost 100 years since World War I and the deployment of chemical weapons outlawed in 1925 by the Geneva Convention. I mean, we saw the horrific results of that in Flanders fields and, and, and during World War, World War I. And here, the Russians still back Assad, and they're claiming the rebels are the ones who conducted this. I mean, they're doubling down with the Iranians and their support for him. So what do we do? Well, I don't see why anybody is surprised at that. I mean, if you look at Russian compliance, I really should say non-compliance with arms control agreements they've signed over the years, uh, they, they probably looked at what Assad was doing in Syria and say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. I mean, it's been discussed publicly for a long time that the Russians themselves are probably uh, in violation of the Chemical Weapons Convention with their development of fourth generation chemical weapons. The Russians are in violation of the 19... Uh, 87 intermediate uh, range nuclear forces treaty that was designed to get nuclear weapons short and intermediate range weapons out of Europe. Uh, they're violating the New START treaty uh, that the President Obama signed and the Senate ratified. Uh, and I think they're fully aware, fully aware that Iran is violating the uh, uh, Obama nuclear agreement uh, signed in 2015. Well, so to me, the, the Russian attitude here is uh, business as usual. Well, you know, we saw Nikki Haley, our U.S. ambassador, really giving it to the Russian, her Russian counterpart at the Security Council the other day. But the Russians are backing down. And now they're even uh, cementing their relationship further, as you say, with Tehran. What does that mean with Tehran and Moscow even uh, cooperating closer together? I mean, Assad's not going anywhere, it seems. I don't think he is. Look, this is not a question. I know everybody's talking about what are we going to do about Syria? What are we going to do about Assad? That's not the question. Neither is the question, what should we do about Iraq? That's not the question either. Uh, the real question is, what are we going to do about Iran, its continued pursuit of nuclear weapons, its continued funding of international terrorism, and its continuing and increasingly successful effort to get an arc of control from Iran through the Baghdad government, uh, in Iraq, through the Assad regime in Syria, through the Hezbollah terrorists in Lebanon, backed by the Russians. The Russians and the Iranians are already in tacit alliance. It may be much more than that. That's what this trip to Moscow by the commander of the Iranian army suggests, as you just indicated. That's the force that's developing. And once we destroy ISIS, which I think President Trump is clearly committed to, that's the issue. How do we deal with the Iran-Russia axis in the Middle East? 
Assad, uh, nobody's going to defend Assad. That's not question number one. That may be question eight or nine or ten. That's not question number one. So what would you suggest, as you put it so eloquently, the arc of control? There's talk about a new coalition of the Sunni Arab states and Israel, for example, to face down Tehran. What do you predict, and what type of move should we make? Well, right now, we're losing. Let's, let's put it that way. But I think the focal point, the imminent focal point, is the destruction of ISIS. This is, again, something that candidate Trump uh, made a lot of uh, 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 comments about during the election campaign. It's obviously something he feels strongly about. He's received uh, new suggestions from the Pentagon. Perhaps some of them are already being implemented to destroy ISIS caliphate, so-called, in what used to be Syria and Iraq as soon as possible. And the reason to do that is so that ISIS is impeded in its ability to recruit and deploy terrorists around the world in Stockholm, perhaps in Alexandria, as we've just seen. Now, once we do that, let's assume it goes well in the six months or nine months, ISIS is completely defeated uh, in those territories and it's not resorted to guerrilla warfare, it's just eliminated. Who's going to control those territories? We're just going to give them back to the government in Baghdad? We're just going to give them back to Assad? I don't think so. That's what we need to think about, not Bashar al-Assad. A strategic plan uh, is what we need, says Ambassador John Bolton, as we go forward. Ambassador, always good to see you. Thank you for joining Thank us. Thank you, Eric. Of course.